Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I've got some new footage of the two remaining maps that we haven't seen from the In the Name of the Tsar DLC and also a little bit of gameplay from the new game mode called Supply Drop. So this footage was recorded at Gamescom and the maps that I'm going to show you are Galassia and a map called Volga River. Now because we've seen all of the other ones already, they've been on CTE or they've been released, so the ones that we've seen are Brussel of Keep, Albion, that's the one with all the islands. Lubkow Pass, of course everyone knows what that is now, it's also out for premium users I think. And Saritzin, that's the latest one that I showed you guys with the big cathedral in the middle. So the two maps that we haven't seen are Galicia and Volga River. Both of these maps are very, very big. They're huge. Volga River in particular has seven flags. So obviously that's a massive map and it's definitely for 64 players on conquest and galicia is also quite a big map but that's only got five flags both of these maps are very flat and open and to be honest with you that's not really my kind of thing when it comes to bf1 i like multiple levels and a lot more variety i think it's obvious that these two maps in the name of the czar dlc have been designed in particular with vehicle players in mind so there's going to be a lot of planes and a lot of tanks going around so if you're into the vehicles in bf1 then i think those two maps in particular from the new dlc will suit you very nicely now if you're a sniper as well there's numerous points on these maps where you can climb up little windmills or get inside buildings or hide behind cover of hills and peek over the top peek through a gap shoot someone's head off there's loads of opportunity for sniping on these levels now we only played about an hour on each of these maps so that's like what two rounds maybe and i have to be honest with you i didn't really enjoy them i think there needs to be far more cover for the infantry players and i'd like a bit of variation in the height rather than this kind of one flat plane that's going on here i'm sure that may change when the maps actually release and i get to play them some more but hopefully you can kind of see what i'm talking about in the footage volga river is definitely the best map out of the two in my opinion because at least on that there's lots of rubble and lots of cover there's this one particular flag where you've got an almost completely destroyed cathedral or ruin or whatever it is and that can be quite interesting for infantry fights but when i was playing that map there was also a massive snowstorm that just completely <laughs> obstructs everything and i just think in battlefield games i mean stuff like sandstorms stuff like snowstorms that completely destroy your vision for me they just don't add anything to the gameplay and they just take the fun out of it and when they happen i don't really enjoy the map anymore but that is a subjective thing they just don't really do it for me there's also new operations as well with this dlc and we played a couple of those obviously the red versus white army civil war thing is kind of cool but i think now that we've seen all of the maps in this dlc Brusilov's keep saritzin lubkow pass and albion are definitely four of my favorites and the new supply drop mode like i said you can see that here now this is kind of like drop zone in battlefront if you guys remember that just like a much slower paced version of it so the game starts and a plane will come along and drop a package like a supply drop and this effectively becomes a domination or a capture point on the map and you have to go next to it it's got a very small radius and when you're in the radius your team will start accruing points and from time to time elite classes also spawn around the map now this is a infantry only game mode so no vehicles on the maps that i played and i don't expect that we'll see vehicles on any of the other maps either it was a bit different i suppose for a small scale game mode but i think that the score takes far too long to build up and also the fact that you have to be so close to these supply drops to gain points means that as soon as you're on them the other team can see that you own them and just spam a load of grenades in, in the general direction and it just becomes a bit of a mess i'd have liked it if the area of the supply drops to score points was just a little bit bigger it is interesting though playing a game mode like this in bf1 where the capture points or the flags are in random places rather than every normal place that you expect a flag to be if you've played a map again and again i will have a more detailed video on supply drop coming out very soon 
you're going to see some new weapons in here too, but I didn't want to put a massive gameplay video up of the two new maps that we haven't seen because of the Across the Battlefield series. I don't want to kind of spoil that for you guys. And in relation to that, I've got a bit of good and bad news at the same time. So I made a video a couple of weeks ago saying I'm having corrective jaw surgery on the 4th of September, and that means that I'm not going to be able to do live commentaries on the remaining maps for the In the Name of the Tsar DLC. And it would have meant that I wouldn't be able to cover the Battlefield 1 competitive thing properly or games like Destiny 2 because they're releasing and after I have this surgery I'm not going to be able to talk properly for four to six weeks so that's why I did that video saying hey listen up this is what's happening but I was going to stock up some content and maybe have some guest commentators in. Now as it's transpired circumstances for that have actually changed so I was due to go in for this surgery on Monday the 4th of September which is next Monday but I met with the surgeons a couple of days ago and they're not 100% happy with the position of my teeth at the moment and because of that they want to delay the surgery because if they go ahead and move the top jaw forward then they want to make sure that it's a good fit with the bottom teeth and essentially what's happened is my teeth aren't 100% in the correct place for that to happen at the moment and they're playing it safe and saying hey if we do the surgery now then there's a risk because it's quite a big movement nine millimeters it doesn't seem like a lot but when you're taking someone's bones off their face and moving them forward and reattaching them nine millimeters is quite a lot for the human body and what happens is your body will try and fight back and move things back to where they were and if you don't have a bit of wiggle room a bit of space in your mouth for that to happen then you can have big problems and complications where the teeth are hitting each other and not working as well together as they should so long story short that means that the surgery is going to be delayed now i'm not going to have it done on monday and instead i'm going to have to have another couple of months worth of work on my brace in my mouth and the surgery will be done in december maybe january if they can't get things right in time for that now this was a bit of a surprise for me because mentally i prepared to go in on monday and have this done because it's quite a major surgery and there's a lot of preparation involved and a lot of aftercare that you need to sort of get ready for so that's a disappointment for me but on the bright side because I'm having it done in December or January now it means that I can actually cover the fall game season properly. If you're a gamer you'll know that all of the big games come out September, October, November and if I'd have had this surgery on Monday it means that I would have missed out on a lot of events and a lot of coverage on YouTube for you guys. But now because of the delay it means that I can cover all of these games so Destiny 2, BF1 Competitive, Battlefront and that's definitely a good thing. Now if you guys are interested in more specifics I thought well I can show you a couple of pictures so you can see exactly what's going on here. So this picture on the screen now is a model of my teeth so you can see that the top teeth are actually behind the bottom teeth that's not a normal bite a normal bite is where the top teeth are in front of the bottom teeth and the bottom teeth kind of intersect with the top teeth in a way that allows you to eat properly and and breathe properly and smile properly but as I've got older for whatever reason my top jaw the scientific term is a maxilla you don't really have a top jaw but it's just easier to call it that hasn't developed properly it's underdeveloped and if you look at me you don't look at me and think oh you've got a massive underbite you know I don't look like beavers from beavers and butthead it's not obvious but in my mouth that's how it looks and that causes problems with eating certain things, with breathing. And if I don't get it done, I'm going to have a lot of problems when I'm older with arthritis. So they remove part of the maxilla and they bring it forward and then reattach it with metal plates and screws. And this is how the teeth should look in the correct position once the surgery is complete. So you can see now that the top teeth are in front of the bottom teeth and the bottom teeth are kind of intersecting with the top teeth in a correct fashion. So that's pretty much what I'm having done. And because it's moving bones around in your face, you're not allowed to chew any solid foods for four to six weeks. And you have to have a liquid diet or mushy food for that amount of time. And also you can't talk properly. So that's going to affect my YouTube videos. But now because of the delay, it means that I can do stuff like across the battlefield for the new in the name of the czar maps and i can do proper destiny 2 coverage and any games or any events that are happening between now and the end of the year so that's a positive side of the delay taking place it's better for me as well because it means that i'm not going to miss out on a load of youtube videos and a load of work that i could have been doing 
towards the end of December and January, there isn't really much news in the gaming scene, so that's a lot better for me. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed a look at this new footage. The DLC is being released, I think, on the 5th of September for premium players, so I should be doing Across the Battlefield episodes as soon as they drop. As always, thank you so much for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.